Good afternoon from Scotland. This is Mark, your Coffee Break host, and I am delighted to be here for another Coffee Break catch-up. This is our new weekly show where we are sharing the Coffee Break news with you, having a chat about language learning, and of course catching up with all the cultural information that you need to know if you would like to put the language that you're learning to practice this coming weekend if you have the chance to travel to some of these places. Welcome to you all. We're delighted to to be here once again, and it's great to see quite a number of you posting comments already. Uh, And do let us know who you are, where you're watching, and what languages you're learning. Uh, It's great to see we've got already a few people here. We've got Diane who's saying hello. We've got Mario Paul uh, who uh, is saying have a good show. We hope you enjoy the, the show, Mario Paul. Uh, we've got Dot joining us from Londres, um, and we have uh, Groves, I'm not quite sure if I'm saying that correctly, from Southern California. And we've also got some comments uh, already, and we'll be posting those comments when it comes to the time that we're going to be talking about uh, our language talking point for this week. But for now, let's have a look at what's coming up. Once again, we've got some coffee break updates for you, some updates on the latest content, the latest shows and the latest information that we've been sharing with you. Um, Then we'll be having a look at this week's talking point and I'll be explaining that in just a moment. And our cultural roundup for the week where we can share all the the details of what's happening um, around the world, around the French, Spanish, German, Italian speaking world uh, for you this week. Okay, so let me just bring this off. I mentioned that talking point, and that talking point is an interesting one this week. We're looking at resources, other resources that you use alongside Coffee Break to help you with your language learning. So if you have got any ideas, then do feel free to post these. We'll be talking about that a little later in the show, uh, but it's good to already have some ideas about what you're thinking about. Okay, now the catch-up is a weekly show. We're going to be bringing this to you every week, every Thursday. Uh, So wherever you are in the world, you can tune in, hopefully live. If you're not tuning in live, you might be watching the the, the catch-up version of the catch-up on on replay. Um, And of course, you're very welcome there if you're watching that version too. But we're trying to do this as a regular thing, as a regular way of keeping in touch with you as the, the Coffee Break community, other Coffee Breakers. And also as an opportunity where we can bring some other members of the team in from time to time. So we've got some plans for that uh, and hope that you will enjoy that too as we move forward with this project. However, let us begin first of all with our news for this week. So coming up on our Coffee Break news, well, it has been a big week for us here at uh, Radio Lingua at Coffee Break Languages because we launched our brand new Coffee Break Italian magazine on Monday. Now, the magazine is a show aimed at intermediate learners, intermediate learners who have already completed at least seasons one and two. So with the Coffee Break Italian magazine, if you've been working through seasons one and two of Coffee Break Italian, then the magazine will be perfect for you. The magazine is broadcast every two weeks for Italian. That started uh, this Monday. And every two weeks up until the the summer, and then we'll we'll be back after the summer with more Coffee Break Italian magazine. And it's separated into three sections. So the first section is all about uh, a text that we're looking at. It's like a cultural text, very much like the Reading Club, if you're a, a member of the Reading Club, but it's that bit longer, that bit more developed. And of course, the great thing about the magazine, it's a podcast, and therefore we can talk about the text in detail. And Francesca and I do just that. Then we've got a a listener phone in and you can actually ask a question of the team. So you can head to coffeebreakquestions.com and there you can ask a question to the team and we will do our best to answer that in a future episode. And then there's a final section, we call it la uh, ciliegina sulla torta, the the little cherry on the cake, the the icing on the cake at the end of the, the broadcast. And that is just something a little interesting, something cultural, something linguistic and it's always good fun. So let's uh, just take a look at this. We we had our episode one broadcast on, on Monday and that was all about la bocca de la verità and that's the mouth of truth. The, the, it's a, a monument in Rome where you have to put your hand in and say something and see if you're telling the truth. Um, so it's a, a great way of, of uh, getting a, a good souvenir from, from Rome. 
And we also have uh, the, so that's the, the podcast, the podcast version of that, which went out in our podcast feed. So if you're already subscribed to Coffee Break Italian, then you'll have picked that up already. But we also have a premium version, uh, a full online course. And I've got a quick video, just a, a one minute video here to explain a little more about what the online course involves. Now, these lessons are available as soon as they are published. So on the 6th of May, episode 1 is available, and thereafter the 20th of May, episode 2, and so on. But if we go into the 6th of May episode, our first episode, and click on the audio and notes, you can see you can play the audio here, but you also have a full transcript of all the Italian contained in the episode and explanations of the words and vocabulary contained. There's the study text. And there are also further explanations and grammatical details of the words and the phrases and the, the, the various elements contained in the lesson. Now, you can also access the vocabulary list. We've provided all the vocabulary for the lesson, and this allows you to test yourself on the vocabulary, perhaps vocabulary you already know, or new vocabulary in the episode. So you can cover up one side of the page and test yourself uh, going from English into Italian, and then the same list is provided in Italian and English in the opposite direction, so you can test yourself there. And for further consolidation, you can use our exercises. There are exercises for each episode. Sometimes they're gap-filling, sometimes they're grammar-based, sometimes they're translation-based. And you can practice your vocabulary and test yourself on what you've understood in the exercise. So that is the Coffee Break Italian Magazine Premium Edition, and you can find that at coffeebreakacademy.com. Now, that's the Coffee Break Italian magazine. We are also very excited about launching the Coffee Break French magazine. And that is coming up this coming Monday. So that's Monday the 13th of May. And uh, what we're going to do, we tried this with the Italian and it worked well. So we're going to do something similar with the, the French magazine because it's launching on Monday. And on Monday evening at 8 o'clock UK time, so that's uh, 3 o'clock Eastern and, and noon Pacific, um, the podcast will go live. So it will be live on the feed and the course will be available. So just like you saw there uh, with the um, the, the Italian resources, um, you will also be able to see uh, a French course. There will be a French course sim very similarly, uh, having the vocabulary and the exercises and the, the transcript and notes. So that will also be available at uh, 8 o'clock. However, if you would like to be the very first people in the world to watch the uh, the the new uh, sorry the, the new Coffee Break French magazine to hear the new Coffee Break French magazine then you can join us live on Facebook for an avant première une avant première is a, 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 an avant première a, a, a pre premiere if you like the very first showing of something and so we'll listen together and then have a chat about some of the language contained and that's going to be happening on Monday night and that's going to happen at 7.15 so that's before the podcast is live you'll be able to listen to it together on Facebook on uh, Monday the evening. So that is something to look forward to. If you are a French learner, you can join us for that on Monday. So some news there for Italian, some news there for French, and also for Spanish learners, we are going to be publishing in Marcha, uh, episode 7 tomorrow. And that is a really good exercise uh, episode because we're in a, a lovely town called Frigiliana, uno de los pueblos más bonitos de España, as they say, one of those beautiful villages of Spain. And in Frigiliana, we interviewed a number of people, we went to the market, and then we also talked to some people in the nearby towns of Maro and Nerja. So it's a lovely episode. Make sure you listen to that. Again, if you're already subscribed to Coffee Break Spanish, you'll get that automatically in your feed. Now, something else we published this week, we try to, to vary what we publish, and something else we published this week was a new video on our YouTube channel. And this was a video all about language learning and how sometimes it's not possible to travel to the country where uh, the language that you're learning is spoken, but you can still use the inspiration from what you see around you, either on a, a vacation when you're visiting another English-speaking country, or indeed when you're just living your life in your own hometown. I was recently in San Diego in California uh, for a conference and I thought I would put together a little video while I was there to explain this concept, to sort of explain what I think you can do when you're looking around you and trying to identify the words and phrases that you see and say them in the foreign language. And if you don't know them, of course, you can make a note. Here's a very quick clip from this video. The full video is available, of course, on YouTube. But here's a quick clip from my postcard, a Coffee Break Language Learners postcard from San Diego. 
Now, we spoke about this idea in a previous video, in a video called Why Language Learning is a Walk in the Park. And we're going to take things a little further today as we wander around and see what we can see and see how we would describe it in the foreign language. So you can watch the whole video on uh, YouTube, but also another thing that we've done with this video is added subtitles, not just like the, the words and phrases that you're seeing on the screen, but full subtitles explaining the, the, the view that you see. So more detail there, and those subtitles are available in German, French, Italian and Spanish. And it will give you the chance to, to think a little bit more. If you're seeing a scene, whether you're uh, having a coffee and watching the world go by, or if you're travelling somewhere and you're looking at the scene as if you're, you're taking a photo or you're, you're imagining a postcard of this scene, then you can look at that and describe what's happening in the scene. And that's what we've done in the subtitles. So you can use the subtitles or you can switch them off. You can use the English subtitles if you want to see what we're trying to, to say in the foreign languages. Um, and you can also, of course, look at those words on the screen of the San Diego video. And if you like this, do let us know by posting a comment on our YouTube channel. Um, and we'll do more of them because it's, it's great fun putting these videos together. Um, and if, the, if you find them useful, then that's perfect. They're a the perfect companion to using the courses, the, the Coffee Break courses that we produce. Talking of that, let's move on to our talking point because this is where we're going to be looking a little more at looking at other resources, using other resources to help you with your language learning. So let's move on to this week's talking point. Okay, so this week's talking point is all about other resources, other resources that complement what you're doing already with Coffee Break. So we're really interested to hear what kind of apps you use, what other podcasts you might listen to, uh, what other resources that you have access to, to help you with your language learning. Let's have a little look at a video we've put together to give you some food for thought on this. Now, we asked earlier, if you had joined us right at the beginning, the, the, if we had asked you, if you to let us know if you use any particular apps or other resources or indeed other podcasts. Uh, we don't mind <laughs> if you use other podcasts. 
to to help you with your language learning journey because I feel very strongly that it's not about one thing. We never say that coffee break, Italian or French or Spanish or whatever is the only thing you need to learn a language. Learning a language is about assembling a range of resources, a toolbox of resources that you can use to help you improve in that language. Of course, we believe that coffee break is a great way to start. It's a great way to take your learning with you on the go, but there are lots of other ways that you can do that. Now, I was actually reading an article at the weekend. Let me see if I can bring this up. No, that's not that one. Here it is. It was an article in the New York Times, and it was about someone who had spent 500 days using the app Duolingo. And uh, this article is about what you can and can't learn from a language app. And it got me thinking. It got me thinking about other apps that I've used for learning various languages. And it made me start to think about whether you could just learn using one resource. Could you only learn the language by using an app like Duolingo or Memrise or Babbel or, or Drops or one of the many excellent language apps that there are out there? I think you can certainly learn a lot. They're a great way to practice what you've learned. They're a great way to practice forming sentences, depending on the app, obviously. Very often, apps can be used for languages which use other scripts or indeed characters like like Chinese, Mandarin Chinese, or Japanese, or indeed another script like Russian or Greek or, or, or Arabic. And that using apps can very much help with those kind of scripts and, and getting over the, 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 the complexity of using another writing system. But I'd like to ask you what your ideas are about using other apps or other podcasts or other resources. What do you use in, in your language learning? We've had a few comments already. Um, so Barbara is saying that she is always looking for, for new ideas uh, to help cement her learning. Um, so hopefully we'll get some ideas here. Let's look at what Enid said. Um, learning Italian in Hampshire, have used Duolingo to get started and use in slow Italian. But this is the best with so much variety in it. So I think you possibly mean uh, Coffee Break Italian is the best. I hope you mean Coffee Break Italian is the best, Enid. Um, so news in slow French, news in slow Spanish, news in slow Italian, an excellent podcast which looks at up-to-date news um, and provides it in slow French, slow Italian, the clues in the name. Uh, so that's a, a great suggestion from Enid. Diane is suggesting something else through meetup.com, which is a website to connect groups of people with similar interests. Uh, Diane participates in a French conversation group every couple of weeks and they meet in coffee shops. Excellent, a bit of coffee break French. And Diane lives near Toronto in Canada. Now we know that lots of our learners do use meetup groups to uh, meet up with fellow learners. Uh, we've actually been asked a few times if we could organise coffee break meetup groups. But of course the, 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 the sort of replicability of that on a huge scale of worldwide learners is really quite uh, demanding. So... That's something that we learn, uh, that, that we, we are very happy for our learners to, to organise themselves. And through sites like meetup.com, it's a great way to, uh, to find fellow people uh, to, with whom you can practise your language skills. Enid is just confirming that she does think that, that Coffee Break Italian is the best. Thank you. Grazie mille. Grazie mille, Enid. Okay, so James is also saying uh, here that he's listened to both of our two seasons of Coffee Break Italian by the looks of things. He also watches on YouTube, it Italy Made Easy, Lucrezia, uh, Italiano Automatico, sometimes Duolingo to build vocabulary. Also listen to QVC Italia live feed on YouTube. That would definitely be a, a way of improving your Italian vocabulary. So that is a great, I've never tried listening to QVC um, to, to pick up an, another language. So I am definitely going to try that, James. I like that one. Excellent. So what about you? What do you use to improve your language skills? What are the, the types of, of apps or podcasts or other uh, resources, be they YouTube channels or indeed live groups where you're, you're meeting up with other people to practice your language skills? Let us know in the comments here. We're also, of course, going to be posting this video on our, our uh, website. So if you're not using Facebook, but you're watching this on our website, then do comment there. And of course, uh, on, on YouTube too, we'll have this video on YouTube too. Uh, just a couple of other comments. We've got Barbara who is uh, saying that she accesses Imparo and 5-Minute Italian for supplemental info. But CBI is the consistent and dependable method for me. <laughs> Grazie mille, Barbara. Um, we've got Vahid who's saying, in addition to Coffee Break French, I use French as my main language on my phone and my computer. 
In addition, I use Linguist app for learning French words and expressions and Busu app for learning the grammar, listening and so on, I imagine. So that's brilliant, Vahid. Um, so a great way to access more French, you can change the language of your phone or your iPad or your computer very easily. Um, just watch that you don't change it by mistake into a script that you can't read because that makes quite difficult to get back to English if you need to at some point. So thank you, Vahid, for your comment there. Um, uh, Guy is also saying that he finds uh, sl using slow Italian a great compliment to, to Coffee Break Italian and we, we would agree it's a, a great uh, podcast, a great resource to, to use. There's one other thing I wanted to mention here about apps and this is uh, perhaps less positive. I'm sure that you will be aware that over the past uh, couple of years we've had some problems with a group of Russian developers who unfortunately stole our content and put that content into an app which they have been selling. So a number of our customers have gone ahead and bought an app thinking it is our Coffee Break app and we have now been through the legal process with Apple 28 times to remove this from the store. That takes up a massive amount of time and uh, there is actually unfortunately very little we can do um, to prevent them uploading it again. And I discovered just before we started this uh, broadcast that the app is once again up. It came down about two or three weeks ago and the developers have once, uh, once again posted the official Coffee Break app, the Coffee Break Academy app. And you'll see there that they're using our logos, they're using our uh, marketing information and so on. And of course, using our content. What they don't seem to be doing is using our information because I don't know where they've got this from. This is in the description. Um, they've created the secret coffee menu where you can explore the best flavours, see the ratings of recipes, add favourites. Yeah, I, I don't really know what's going on there, um, but what we do know is going on is the fact that they have they've stolen our content, they're using it illegally, and we would very much plead with all our learners, do not, do not download this false, this fake Coffee Break uh, app. So just a couple of other uh, comments here from our uh, learners. We've got Groves, who says I've got to call him Ron. So Ron says, I tried Duolingo and found that if you don't use the discussion part, it's very limited. Okay. Um, we've got Enid saying also in the UK, language cafe groups exist for conversation in the language you're learning, and I'm sure they will exist in, in many places too. Um, Mario Paul is saying that he lives in Surrey. Um, and he's studying Italian. Apart from the season I'm doing with Coffee Break Italian, I use a BBC publication grammar book. He also uses a couple of textbooks uh, used for basic Italian exams. Sometimes I listen or watch Italian TV and I also chat with a friend from Torino who's trying to improve his English and he helps me with the Italian. It all helps. Um, James, just commenting there on our app situation, thank you, James, for your empathetic response there. Um, again, we just hope that, that the, it, it is quite obvious in some ways that it's not our content because it doesn't sound like the way we talk um, in terms of the way in which the, uh, the, the, the marketing language is used in the app. Um, I guess there's maybe something missing in translation from the Russian. But anyway, we won't go into that any further because this is supposed to be a positive, uh, a positive broadcast. So let's focus on the positive. So again, if you have any ideas, please do post your ideas in the comments. Of course, this is the live broadcast at the moment, but we'll be catching up with this after the event. And uh, we'll be very happy to see your comments in the comments about your ideas for using different apps, different resources and other podcasts in language learning. That's our talking point. It's now time to move on to our cultural tips for this week. So let's have a look at that. Okay, so once again, cultural tips for this week. Coming up this week, uh, we have the Taste of Paris Festival, which I think sounds quite divine. It's the very best of the Parisian restaurant scene, which takes place in the beautiful Grand Palais. Now, if you're not familiar with the Grand Palais, it's a wonderful building um, in, in Paris, so you can have uh, experienced that in, in all its beauty. And this is four days of food tasting, cooking shows, meets and greets with chefs. It sounds wonderful. I think I might head over to Paris uh, for this because it sounds just right up my street. Um, so that takes place from the 9th to the 12th of May, le 9th au 12 mai. 
and you can have a, a taste of Paris. Now, sticking with, with French, we're also going to Montreal today, and that is for La Vue sur la Relève. So this is an annual festival which takes place in Montreal. It features upcoming Canadian artists uh, who are involved in all sorts of performing arts, so including song, music, dance, storytelling, uh, circus and, and theatre, all sorts of areas. And the idea is that this festival is aiming to bring uh, the next generation of performance artists to the attention of the world stage. So that's the Vue sur la Relève from the 6th to the 18th of May. Let's move to Spanish now, and we are heading today to Argentina, del 25 de abril al 13 de mayo, the Feria del Libro. This is the world's most, sorry, it's the most important Spanish-speaking literary event, and it takes place over 20 days from the 25th of April, and it become, it's become a, a meeting place for all readers, attracting more than 1 million readers from all over Latin America. Um, so there's a program of conferences, readings, workshops and uh, information shared uh, through this Feria del Libro in, in Buenos Aires. And one thing that I should mention here is the El Ateneo Gran Splendid. And this is a bookshop in Buenos Aires. And the, this was named the world's most beautiful bookstore by National Geographic in 2019. And I am hoping that at some point soon I'm going to be able to travel to Buenos Aires. And that is definitely one of my stopping points, the, the uh, Ateneo Gran Splendid bookstore in Buenos Aires. Okay, let's move on to another language and we'll go to the Biennale. The Biennale di Venezia. This is such an important event for Venice. It happens every two years and the pre-opening is this weekend. So starting uh, tomorrow, the 8th, through to the 10th of May. And the Biennale is a cultural event, an event, an event for artists, for, uh, it basically is a, a, an art exhibition. And the title this year is May You Live in Interesting Times. Very interesting. So the exhibition is going to include 79 artists from all over the world. And uh, as of uh, Sunday, when the, the preview ends, on Sunday, you will then be able to visit that yourself. So you can take place, to take part rather in the Biennale in uh, uh, Venice from uh, Monday onwards. And it's open right the way through to the, to the October, uh, the middle of October, I think. Uh, the, sorry, it's open to the 24th of November. So there you go. From the 11th of May to the 24th of November, the chance to uh, see the Biennale, and I'm just actually thinking, I got my dates wrong, it opened yesterday and the pre-opening is running until tomorrow and then on Saturday that's when it opens to the public, so apologies for that. Um, hopefully if you can get to Venice uh, for Saturday then you'll be able to go to the Biennale. Okay, and one final event, and that is an interesting one, a, a cultural and a culinary festival. That's the Grüne Soße Festival, uh, and this takes place in the area around Frankfurt. And what is Grüne Soße? Well, it's, it's a green sauce. And this green sauce is traditionally made from seven different herbs, and it's usually served with boiled potatoes and hard-boiled eggs. So the Green Sauce Festival is a seven-day culinary celebration of the, the favourite dish of the author Goethe. He apparently liked Grüne Soße. Um, it starts on the 11th and ends on the 18th of May, and there are dozens of restaurateurs who are competing for first place in the Green Sauce competition. Now, um, you can certainly head to the Frankfurt area if you fancy some Grüne Soße, and uh, that is taking place, obviously, uh, in the coming days, so starting on the 11th of May. So that's a cultural roundup uh, for this week. Now, before we finish, just a couple of things. We have gathered together some articles about all of these cultural uh, events that are happening. And we are going to be sharing the links for these articles in our newsletter tomorrow. So that's our Friday newsletter, the catch-up newsletter. And we send out one newsletter that covers all our languages. We'll share all the links for the, the things that we've spoken about in this episode. So talking about uh, the Coffee Break French magazine, the Italian magazine, um, our Coffee Break German to go episodes as well, which I didn't mention, the San Diego video, the uh, In Marcha episode and so on. So all of that um, will be linked to in tomorrow's newsletter, which will go out uh, around lunchtime UK time. 
And if you're not yet subscribed to the newsletter, then do make sure you are. And you can go to radiolingua.com slash newsletter to sign up for our Coffee Break Catch-Up newsletter. As I say, we'll send out some links to articles about all of these cultural events in the language, so that will give you some reading practice and also some information in English if you don't speak that particular language but are still interested in finding out more. One final thing, and that is... I don't know whether I've got one here. No, I've not got one here. It is our Coffee Break mug competition that we had uh, a few weeks ago launched a, a giveaway where uh, we are going to be giving away a couple of Coffee Break mugs. They are exclusive. No one has them. You can't buy them in the stores, but you can get one if... Potentially, you can get one if you send us a postcard. So send us a postcard and tell us about your language learning experiences. You can send a postcard to 100 West George Street in Glasgow, G21PP. That is our address. And we would love to hear from you, love to get a postcard from you. And you may be in with a chance of winning a Coffee Break mug. Uh, at the end of the month. We'll draw that here in the Coffee Break Catch-Up later in the month. But that is where we're going to leave you today. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, very quickly, um, Guy's mentioned that he's found a lovely Italian tutor on italki to help me practice what I learned from CBI. Brilliant. Um, and I think we've done all her, her hellos. Um, and of course, if you're joining us after the event, oh, we've got Marilyn joining us for, from Exeter, uh, Jody joining us from Maryland, and we've got Annie joining us from Trinidad and Tobago. Wow. Um, and James, I think I've mentioned already, joining us from New York. Fantastic. Of course, if you're joining us after the event, then do post where you're learning. It's always great to see lots of listeners and lots of viewers after the event. But thank you very much indeed for tuning in today. It really does make a difference to know that we've got live viewers uh, watching this show. We will post the, 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 the replay version of the show, of course, both on Facebook and on our site. Uh, and we'll be back next Thursday. Before then, of course, we'll be going live on Monday night for our launch of the Coffee Break French magazine and all the other dates, all the other details and all the other links are going to be in your Coffee Break catch-up newsletter tomorrow. And I know that the team have posted the link on Facebook for you. Thank you. Thanks for joining us today. Um, I always try to finish with a, a thank you in a different language. So today I think we'll go to Bulgarian and let's try Blagodaria. Blagodaria. Thank you very much for joining us. Um, we would love to hear from you. Uh, but for now, that is uh, it for this episode. Bye-bye.